Every year, a metric buttload of soil is lost. We're talking tens of millions of hectares, and it's all due to erosion. Now, someone in the Geek Crew asked for a video on erosion in your garden, so that's what we're going to do today. Now, the phenomenon of losing soil in a garden due to erosion is not novel in any way, shape, or form. It's actually something that we have looked at. And it is quite significant due to the excessive levels or higher levels, not necessarily maybe excessive, but higher levels of water usage. So first, I think it's really important to look at exactly what soil erosion is. And soil erosion, simply put, is the loss of your top layer of soil. So when we look at soil, we usually say top soil is much different than the lower so soil profiles. There's a reason for this. It is much more fertile. So the way that you lose a lot of soil is through wind and or through water. You could say mechanical means as well, but that's a little bit more rare. If you have a soil that seems like it has a fine dust on the top and then very quickly turns to compacted soil, you're at higher risk of soil erosion and losing that topsoil, making your soil less fertile, regardless of how much you decide to put into it. And then the other option or the other way we can find out if you have soil erosion is if you have a lot of fissuring in your soil. So lots of channels, that sort of thing due to water and or pockets that seem to get really muddy and where water seems to sit. That means that that space is a low lying area collecting the most topsoil. And the surrounding areas of that are actually losing topsoil. When we think of topsoil and the loss of it, we usually coincide that with the loss of nutrients. So nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, macronutrients, micronutrients, you kind of get the idea. But what if I told you it actually affects two other integral parts of what makes a soil a soil? Number one is the structure. So soil is made out of sand, silt, and clay. And the structure of it is heavily dependent on sand, silt, and clay. So when we have excessive levels of erosion, we actually are interfering with what would be a normal aggregation or soil structure. And this is particularly true if we have those deep channels of erosion that are from water causing issues. Now, the other thing that it actually heavily disrupts is our microbial activities. So microbes, if you did not know, do not live throughout the entire soil profile. They are, for the most part, located in the top two inches. As you get lower in the profile, the less you begin to see when it comes to microbes. So the constant loss of this nice, light, fluffy, unaggregated soil, the top soil, actually reduces in microbial activities, which in turn reduces the nutrient cycling, which in turn reduces the bioavailable nutrients that your plants need to survive. That is why mitigating erosion is so important. And it doesn't necessarily just mean throwing mulch on top. There are some other things you want to consider, particularly if you have heavy snowfalls and you have bare gardens for even a portion of the year. Okay, so when it comes to soil erosion in the garden, we have other factors at play and it doesn't just involve wind or water. If you're watering with high pressure, so those of you that use a hose and don't use like a drip irrigation and you go to spray your water, you will quickly realize that it seems as though the soil is moving around and it is. Now this may not translate into a loss, but the soil pressure in excessive use or in certain circumstances can and will lead to that topsoil erosion. The next one I think is kind of obvious, tillage. Excessive levels of tillage makes a very fluffy soil. A very fluffy soil is very easy for it to be carried away. Now, I am a huge advocate for using the tools you need to make a garden, one of which sometimes is actually tillage. Despite popular belief, sometimes it's necessary. And therefore, if you do go the tillage route, you want to make sure you do have a mulch and or some sort of way in which you are covering that soil surface to reduce its exposure. The next one is actually slopes in your yard. So I've seen this a few times now, but if you've got a garden kind of on a hill and it is goes without saying that the top of the hill is going to have less topsoil, less nutrients, the lower you get, the more that accumulates, the higher it becomes. And this doesn't seem like a big issue because you're just thinking to yourself, well, I'll just fertilize more at the top of the hill. 
but that's the nature of soil erosion. It just keeps on moving that nutrients down regardless of how much you put up top. So that one's very difficult to mitigate. Now this one I see in my garden all the time and it's actually in raised beds. So in raised beds, if you own them, you will notice sometimes that the edges seem as though they're shrinking. And while some of that is contraction of the soil due to loss of moisture later in the season, some aggregation that may be taking place, at times it can actually be the loss of topsoil or the loss of soil from the raised bed itself via gravity. So gravity is going to pull a lot of the particulate out, particularly if we're flooding that raised bed when we go to water rather than a drip irrigation or something more gentle. So how do you actually prevent this in the garden? Well, but the solutions are actually incredibly simple. Number one is going to be mulching. When we say mulch, we mean heavily mulch, two to three inches, ideally. It doesn't have to be a store-bought mulch. It can be simply leaves if you want it to be. This is something that you may just choose to add in the fall and have it carry on or support that soil against erosion throughout the winter or it's something you can leave on all year. If you have something on a hill, you need to think about terracing that hill. Terracing is simply literally putting like a ledge almost that, that supports less erosion due to gravity. Cover crops, we've spoken about this before. I've done an entire video on it, but essentially cover crops are really good at doing this. And that includes even in a cold climate, if you were to right now plant your cover crop, as long as you have some cover crop there, some root structure, some coverage, it will actually prevent against that soil erosion. Gentle watering, I mean, this goes without saying drip irrigation where you can, but I understand that that's not always feasible. So when you do go to water, try to turn it down or try to get a nozzle that does have a dial that you can turn down. I do have one that I personally like that I got off Amazon. Let me know if I forget to tag it in the comment, but I will put it in the pinned comment and it has a variety of different settings. It actually also lets you adjust the intensity in which the water comes out of the physical hose, which is very, very nice. The last one actually is probably one of my favorites, and it's one that is used on a large agricultural scale, scale as well. And that is the use of, in the case of a garden, perennial crops around the edges of the garden, around the edges of your in grounds. If you are talking bigger acreage type scenarios, we're talking carrigana bush trees, that sort of thing. And what this does is it prevents against wind erosion because there is quite a bit of science that has gone into this over the years, particularly due to the dirty 30s, where the height of your kind of border perennial shrub has an effect on how and when that air actually will hit your garden or your soil. And then the other side of that token is that when the soil does flood, the actual perennials are very good at actually capturing that water quickly. And the water usage of that plot is much higher now, which in means that you're less likely to have pooling water and you're less likely to have water that's going to run away on you. So you have to let me know in the comments down below if soil erosion is something that you're worried about in your garden. For me personally, I don't see it too much on my in-ground beds, but I have seen it on my raised beds. And that is particularly true when we're talking the log bed where I put a bunch of logs underneath, my really high video bed I've noticed it in as well. So it's definitely something you have to watch for. And mine is completely water driven because it always happens after watering. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you next time. Bye.